Hi guys, it's Will from Potato Strong here. I'm delighted to introduce you to Star from Divine Bag of Cells. And I thought we would, I would ask her a question about addiction. She's got some experience with that. So what, what I'm gonna try to help you guys with is how you, you know, break some of the addiction. So, so Star, what's your thoughts on helping people to break out of some of their addictions to some of the unhealthy food and when they tend to go back and you know, make, you know, cheat on, um, on their lifestyle and, and eat some of these unhealthy foods and keep doing that um, without being able to kind of break those habits. Hey, well, it's good to be here. <laughs> um, you know, addiction has been something that's been really prevalent for me in my journey. And it wasn't always with food. You know, it started with drugs and alcohol and cigarettes and just repetitive thought patterns. And then it kind of, I started to desire a health journey and I started to want to end some of my vices and then it got transferred over to food where food became kind of like this coping mechanism you know if I felt a little bit uneasy or if things weren't working out I would eat because it's comfortable it feels good it's enjoyable to eat we all need to eat to kind of sustain life <laughs> um so it's kind of, it becomes dangerous in our society when we're kind of raised, you know, food becomes a treat or in schools. I was recently working in schools and food was kind of used for the kids as like, oh, you're doing something good. Here's an Oreo, you know, regular Oreos are just crap for the body. There's nothing nutritious in them. And like when we're feeding our children, these kinds of foods, and teaching them that if they're good and deserving, they get these foods. And if they're bad, you know, we have to take these kind of foods away from them and they don't get, you know, what other kids are getting. It just sets these patterns in our minds to equate, you know, feeling good and good things to these kind of foods. So, you know, we're having to break patterns that have been with us since childhood, you know. I People come from families that they always have dessert after dinner or you know we're really used to having plates full of meat and dairy and oils and processed salts and sugars so we kind of need to educate ourselves and then we need to find out what our priorities are and kind of move in the direction of those. Like for me, I realized that, you know, I want to be healthy. I want to be strong. I want to be fit. I want to, when I'm older, I want to know that I did the best that I could for my body. And I kind of moved into that person because of the choices that I make. So as far as addiction goes, we really need to be honest with ourselves. We need to find out, you know, what are those foods that really make us feel good? What are those foods that we're using to escape ourselves? What are those foods that, you know, we've kind of just been conditioned to eat and enjoy because of our upbringing and our society? And then we need to become honest with ourselves about those kinds of foods. And we need to break our habits and our patterns. So I think that's one of the most important thing for kind of overcoming addiction is recognizing what our habits and our patterns are and then working to break those. And then we can develop new habits and new patterns because the brain has been, you know, it's been wired. We have build our neuro connections. And so we can rewire the neuro connections in our brain, but it takes conscious effort. You know, it takes changing our habits and our patterns. I mean, you are a huge example for someone who's been, you know, kind of eating more Western diet, and then you found the starch solution, and you've completely changed your habits and your patterns, and like, also, you've done something really cool where you make alternatives to like what you used to enjoy, you just kind of make healthier alternatives and healthier options, so I really yeah. like that too. Yeah, I was... um one of the things I really liked to, to do was eat chips um, like Doritos or salt and vinegar. And I would Very eat a whole bag. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're, you can't eat like, you cannot, uh -uh. I couldn't personally, I'd eat the whole bag. I could never eat a bit and have some. 
And even worse was when I had dip, like the Philadelphia cream cheese uh, French onion dip as well. And I'd eat the whole oh, container. God. And um, I would be so uncomfortable. And I'd go to bed at midnight and I would still be full. Like it just sits in my stomach. Yeah. But the initial taste was overriding any, you know, logic. And um, some of it, yeah, like you, you, you look at it like say you're stressed out. So you, it's a reward or, um, you know, a Saturday night treat or a Friday night treat was, was a habit when I grew up, you know, we, we would order pizza or, or whatever. Um, and so those habits were deeply ingrained. And I have a couple of things that I talk that I, like you said, the finding an alternative. So, um, I do have a potato chip recipe. Now, honestly, it's not as good as, you know, when I used to have the chips, <laughs> I mean, um, as far as the, I love you know, your that, recipe. I want to try it one day. I like how they can, get so thin and crispy. Yeah. Yeah. Surprisingly, like in the microwave, how crispy they were. Um, and you can put spices on them and everything. And so I like those. And, um, the other thing, so the alternatives is, is a great, like banana ice cream and stuff like that. Um, sort of creating those new things, those new healthy, so creating new habits. But related to that was completely going cold turkey because I was a vegetarian for over 10 years, I think. And, but I still ate cheese and all the chips and everything. And yeah, you can be unhealthy. You can be cold. a vegan and be unhealthy, you know? Yeah. And so what I did was, I think when I was watching the Netflix um, documentaries, like uh, Forks Over Knives and, Engine 2 diet. I think Rip, El Rip, Rip Elselstein from Engine 2, he'd go in people's homes and open up the fridge and the cupboards and he saw like, you know, I was looking at myself, like you see all the, the junk and they, he got rid of everything in the house. So you completely eliminate any temptations and you buy all new stuff. And once you give your taste buds a chance uh, to adjust, you know, you start to crave and, and enjoy the new, the new food. So, um, totally. That's kind of a secret that I feel like a lot of people don't really know or understand until they like embrace a changed way of eating is that your taste buds really adjust to the foods that you're eating. And it's like, if you give yourself 30 days of eating a consistent way, like you will start to enjoy those flavors where our taste buds are so desensitized from all the refined oils and the refined salts and just like, the taste explosion that's in everything in, you know, all the chips that you buy or all the dishes at restaurants that we're not really able to kind of sit with and appreciate those natural flavors. But once your taste buds get a chance to like revitalize, those things become amazing. Like I seriously enjoy what I eat, you know, like I could eat just, you know, I could eat fruit as is amazing. I love fruit, but I could also eat just like rice, and beans and a vegetable and I don't even really need seasoning and I really I feel like I enjoy what I eat as much as a pizza person with lots of cheese and all that enjoys what they eat I mean obviously they're very different foods but that same level of enjoyment I feel like I have because I've eaten those kind of cheesy pizzas and really enjoyed them but also I really enjoy the simple the simple flavors and I love knowing that like everything I'm putting into my body is actually nourishing and feeding this vehicle that we're in. Yeah. I think when you combine the knowledge of the foods, like when you start eating those foods and you learn about them from, you know, all the different Dr. McDougal's and they um, learn about nutrition facts, like Dr. Grieger about fruit and plants, you start understanding plants have all these protective responses to the environment. And then when we eat those, we, we obtain, some of those benefits and you, you start learning more and more and there is more of a connection, but yeah, like I agree with you. Like when I ate those foods before I enjoyed them and part of my like potato strong recipes is to provide like when you, you know, mashed potatoes and gravy or whatever, even banana ice cream. I have smoothies sometimes in the morning if I have, if I get bananas on sale and I've actually really been, cause I eat oatmeal most of the time, but I've been really, craving i guess is the word but you know thinking about a big banana strawberry smoothie that's my favorite and i'm yeah i'm a big fan of uh of the 
of the fruit as well. And so um, just, yeah, finding those things. But, you know, you probably studied this in psychology was the uh, relief of cognitive dissonance. So when you tell people like about the taste buds and give it a chance, it's almost like you're making an excuse and, you know, to people that don't really understand. Because when I first went to, um, even when I went to vegetarian, I had to, I had to have a piece of meat, uh, you know, a soy based product in, in place, you know, potato, vegetables. And then there's this like a hole, like a missing void yeah. that, and I needed to have that for years and years and years. It never really went away until I went hundred percent plant-based when I could just have a big plate of whatever, and I don't have to replace the meat with something else. And, um, pizza, like when I first made pizza without cheese, it was kind of like, you know, this isn't that great. And, um, so, you know, I'm just being honest with people that, uh, some of the things did take some time, but one big thing that happened for me was vegetables really, because when you're eating the, the typical American diet or a Canadian diet, I guess in my case, but, um, <laughs> <That's true. laughs> you know, even though I was vegetarian, it does affect your palate and you don't really enjoy vegetables. Um, you know, and I grew up without a lot of, it was more meat and potatoes and we didn't really eat vegetables. So a lot, a lot of it was, you know, habitual bringing, but. Well, the thing, you know, we're really creatures of habit. And so the way that we're raised, it sticks with us. I was raised vegan and then vegetarian. So I came from a background of eating super healthy, but then I rebelled for a while. I was like, mom, can't we shop at Safeway? You know, I just wanted to eat like everyone else. And I thought it was miserable. So it's really fascinating that I came back, but I can see with other people, like, you know, it's a learning curve. And I feel like to break addiction, especially with food, like knowledge really is power. Like once you start gaining the knowledge that like, we've been duped, man, we've been duped to think all these foods are healthy for us that aren't, you know, the food pyramid, they keep changing it. So I don't even know what the newest one looks like, but it's just, you know, fruits and vegetables should be like really high up there as well as starches and things like that. But we place such a high emphasis on, you know, meat and dairy and like we subsidize all this meat and, you know, we have to understand that the meat and dairy industry is really, it's really intertwined with our society and our government and they're just super powerful and they have lots of money and it really influences a lot of uh, people and you know it's really fascinating to live in a time when doctors you know they don't even really need to know about nutrition and it's just so bizarre because the food that we eat literally becomes the cells that we are you know so I think that a really good a really good way to break addictions and to become healthier is to become informed you know when you yeah. realize that like if you read a book like the starch solution you know that's that is like priceless knowledge you're like wow you know this food that i thought yeah. wasn't good for me actually is those civilizations who have existed on rice corn potatoes for centuries and have had way lower uh cases of osteoporosis you know we're taught we need calcium for strong bones when they have way stronger bones and like they don't ever drink milk. It's like, yeah. you know, cows produce milk for their babies. <laughs> and we're the yeah. only species that drinks another animal's milk for our whole entire lives. It just seems weird to me when I think about it. Yeah. Yeah, there's a, a book, um, Why We Love Dogs, Wear Cows and Eat Pigs. It's, it's The topic is cool carnism it's about it's systemic and it's it's really people don't even have to think about it you know i look at people be, being very busy in their lives and they're not really making conscious choice like they're not like there's people that talk about paleo and that they need protein or they need this and that those people are are consciously choosing it and they're they're looking at studies and trying to justify it and those are the people we tend to focus on when we discuss you know, arguing with people about paleo or Atkins diets and stuff, but the vast majority of people, and it's a whole chain reaction from going through the educational system and, and working in the corporate world, industrialized world, and then having kids and, and being so busy that you 
what, you know, you basically outsource your, your cooking either with restaurants, fast food or yeah. processing. I used to go to the store and like, you don't really want to cook. Um, I've been helping people for, I've been helping people for over a year. I'm not a chef or anything by any means, but I have the time because, you know, it's a whole other discussion, but I got out of as much as I could away from the corporate world and I have more time to spend on this. But so when I get in, when I got into it, I, I read everything and studied and I experimented and adjusted recipes and, you know, I'm helping people with the recipes, but based on the questions that I'm getting, like there's a, lo- a lack of knowledge of just even the basics of, of cooking. Like uh, I've had people ask me how to make popcorn, how to, you know, how do you, what's a, you know, tea, how many teaspoons, like cups and, and just um, things that are easily searchable. And I just think that people don't have a lot of time and they're not really consciously thinking about it. And then they're also programmed like with the commercials, you know, if they think about protein or calcium, they think about meat and dairy automatically. And then if they actually are thinking about changing, they might be worried about um, not getting nutrition, but I'm not sure if that's hundred percent true or if they're just, you know, they don't want to make the changes, but it's interesting for me to figure out how people, um, change like how I change how other people might change a lot of times they do walk the documentary where you you learn for yourself you know it, instead of being talked at it, it kind of comes internally through your own knowledge but but at the same time you don't you don't want to waste too much time waiting for people to, to change but I think there's many reasons people change you know I think people can get drawn to a lifestyle like this because they want to lose weight or because they've had a serious health ailment and they realize, wow, what's working for me? What's, what I'm doing isn't working for me. Like I need to change something. Or they might get inspired because they see somebody else doing something. So I think there's many reasons. Um, but definitely developing some sort of desire is really important. You know, the yeah. desire to look, lose weight or to want to look better, to want to feel better. Maybe they're tired all the time and they're like, God, what can I do? I need to do something, you know? So luckily they might stumble upon this kind of lifestyle. Yeah. With, um, with people that, you know, there's, I'm hoping that the, um, there's a variety, you know, Rothel for, and there's mm-hmm. Sarge Solution and things like that. What I liked about Sarge Solution, see, I, I'm basically mid forties now. So, I, I I had ingrained habits of eating all the comfort foods. So to, to, you know, younger people are, it might be easier for them to go, you know, more fruit um, or depending on the climate and where they are, but okay. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with any of the, any of the plant-based approaches, but um, I hope that these, these foods can replace, like it gives them that comfort and that tasty food that will help the, like we're, the topic is, you know, the addictions and, and that but i found that if you indulge in those desires it never you'll never break free of them so you really need that time like you say to, away from it to um to to break that and develop new um because i think yeah like you said earlier like i think everything is is is, is behavioral in a lot of ways it's just automatic a lot of times so you just create it's going to take a little time to create new behaviors and you know you stock your cupboards with different things and and basically those the things you make like i just switched what i cooked i still do the same process i come home i make the meals you know and it's like but it's just adjusted now i don't dump oil in when i fry vegetables like when i fry onions and garlic and that and before i saute i don't do the oil anymore i just put water but a lot of the things that i that i make are are, are quite similar so that's you know hopefully helpful for people as well I really like your approach. I shared your channel. I shared a YouTube video of yours on my channel, hoping that some of my family would see because I have a lot of um, overweight family and they're just really unhealthy and they don't really want to hear anything that I have to say because my dad was pretty radical and he wanted to make them all healthy and they just were like, oh God, Robbie with his vegetables, you know, we like our meat. So they don't really respond to me, but you know, they're sick and dying and having lots of health problems. And you know, I think that your approach is really approachable to people. Like they can just change, you know, simple things within the meals that they're making and still get that kind of comfort. 
And I don't necessarily think that everybody who eats unhealthy has an addiction problem with food. I think that a lot of them, that's just the way that they eat because that's all that they know. Like for me personally, I've had addictions throughout my life, like drugs, alcohol, cigarettes, and then transitioned to food. I had a binge eating problem. And I thought when I found it was raw till four didn't exist when I found this lifestyle. It was, and I didn't know about the starch solution when I found this lifestyle. I found freely and I found um, the, the raw, the high fruit raw. And I was like, oh my God, I found it. This is my way of eating. I can eat as much as I want and not get fat and this will be wonderful. And so I did that for a while and kind of gone in waves with that lifestyle and kind of ventured off from the high carb lifestyle and just ate kind of a normal vegan diet with um, more oils and salt and stuff like that. And then came back to the high carb lifestyle and then found raw till four because she transitioned to raw till four. And I was like, oh, that sounds interesting. I'm going to try that. And like just eating and eating and eating so much food. And it wasn't, it was like I changed you know, I could eat more and I wasn't really gaining weight, maybe like a couple pounds. I probably gained like five pounds, um, but just eating and eating and eating. And I realized like, man, I don't want to just eat and eat and eat. Like I'm feeding an addiction that has been with me and it's just changed forms and it's changed vices. And now it's turned into this food addiction. And I found a lifestyle, which I think can support my addiction, you know? And I realized that that's not, that's not serving me. That's not serving my body. Like my body does not want to consume so much food all the time. That's, I'm not thriving that way. I'm feeding this addictive part of myself. That's like, Oh, I feel a little uncomfortable and antsy. I'm just going to eat and like, I'll feel more comfortable, you know? So I realized that like, I realized that I didn't want to turn to that for a crutch. I don't want to turn to anything for a crutch. And so I think that with addiction, you have, there's an underlining root. There's an underlining feeling and emotion behind it. And I don't think that everybody that eats has that. I don't think that everybody that eats lots of food has that. But I think that there are people that use food as a coping mechanism or emotional eating or just get really used to, you know, consuming lots of food all the time because it just feels, it's comforting. It feels comforting. So I think in order to move beyond those kinds of addictions, it's more than just changing the kinds of foods that you eat. Yeah. You know, I think. Yeah, that's different triggers, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So I Um, think for some people, the answer is, changing the diet because you know you're going to eliminate your potential for so many different diseases you're going to feel better your cells are going to thrive you're going to have more energy you know so so many benefits from coming to a plant-based lifestyle and if you are a binge eater and it's better for your body to binge on whole food plant-based uh high carb food definitely But if you recognize that, wow, there's also an emotional element, I'm eating more than my body actually needs, you know, I'm continue eating when like I'm satiated, I've had enough, then that's another, another layer that after you've transitioned to this lifestyle, and if you have that, like I do, did and working on and working through, then that's another layer that you need to deal with. And it's like, for me, what's really working is becoming present, becoming present and, you know, becoming present with my food, chewing slower, uh, realizing like, okay, I've had enough. And it, it helps me to know kind of generally what my calories are. Like I'll eat, when I eat something like rice, I cook one cup of cooked rice and I eat that whole cup of cooked rice, maybe with some vegetables. But that works for me. I think a cup of cooked rice is around 600 to 700 calories with like some vegetables. That's a good amount. I feel good after I eat that. I don't feel too full and I feel completely satiated for hours. But let's say if I just cooked like four cups of rice and was like, oh, I'm just going to eat some of this. It might be easier for me to overdo it because of my history of just consuming, consuming so much food. 
So it's really working with, you know, your habits and really becoming in tune with your own self because we're all individual beings, you know, and we all have different things that trigger us, different desires. And so if we can become present with this experience of eating, that seems to be so confusing for us. We don't know what we should eat. We don't know when we should eat. We don't know how much we should eat. We don't know if we should be paleo, you know, uh, high carb, uh, vegan, raw. It's like there's so much confusion for the human species about what we should be eating. Um, so something like intuitive eating on a healthy lifestyle can be really beneficial. And just the practice of becoming present and aware with the experience of eating can really help. Becoming yeah, that's one, of, anything. that's one of the things I like about your channel. You're looking at the well, the whole person and the well-rounded approach, not just talking about food. That's why one of the reasons why I recommended, you know, your people check out your channel. Um, and, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at some of that, those aspects myself, but the, uh, like meditation and that sort of thing. But um, the, like the, the binge eating is definitely a, a complicated situation. Um, there's a guy, Doug Lyle, he wrote that book, um, The Pleasure Trap. And there's just natural things that we desire, like salt, sugar, fat type thing. And so it's, you know, when you say people are addicted, it sort of implies sometimes a weak, a weakness or a, a flaw. But these, these chips or, or these things that have salt, the snacks and that, you know, they've been designed to Exactly. for us to so it's like a natural yeah. reaction and so those things that that's just a, a natural reaction and you, you you generally have to avoid them i mean mm -hmm. but if you have a tendency to binge even on healthy food and go way beyond your your fullness that's a that's another level where you know you know more more serious analysis and and, and uh needs to be done but um yeah, it's just all about you know being trusting yourself and like really but finding out what's going on with you and what you're desiring. Because like you said, those foods have been designed for us to want to eat more. I watched someone's YouTube video relatively recently. They live in some other country somewhere. And this guy was just so angry that the bag of chips, they used to be like this big. And then they were like this big. And then that the smaller bag was like no longer an option anymore. And it's like, they know that you're gonna, you're gonna eat the whole bag. It's like, they're hard to put down. And like you said, they've been designed. Yeah, so it's just a, it's just a avoiding those things, um, not having them like my suggestion, you know, not even having them in the house, um, buying them because I mean, some people have told me that they live with other people who aren't doing this lifestyle, and that would be really difficult um, because the temptations are there. And um, what I would work for me was to get rid of all that stuff and not be tempted because I know, like I, I always say, I'm a weak, weak man, like. Um, even, even where I'm at now, some things could tempt me, even though, um, I don't generally have a sweet tooth. It's more of a, like a salty chips or something like that. I don't really have an ice cream thing. I, I really like the frozen banana ice cream. So like re replacing the, the things that you used to like with other things is definitely a great, uh, a great approach, but Absolutely. I totally agree. I just got back from this camping trip and like I was really prepared, you know, there other people I was camping with, they brought things like cookies and stuff like that. And I brought um, date rolls, which to me, that's like my sweet. They're super sweet and tasty. And they're just like, uh, I don't know, ground up dates with like coconut on the outside. So I think being prepared is really beneficial. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was talking about that once. I think, um, just we went to a, I don't go out much to social events and that but we brought a fruit tray and a veggie tray and they had cake and and stuff like that and normally I would be definitely tempted from some of that stuff but um the uh yeah I've made those date balls coconut with a bit of chocolate as well cocoa or cacao whatever and um those are really really good and I can sort of, I have this little bit of guilt with, with when I made those because I, I made them and they're like, oh my God, these are good. And then I go downstairs and I'm thinking about them in the fridge and they didn't last that long. But, but I mean, at the end of the day, it is dates and 
you know, it's healthy. So it's not a complete, um, but it definitely started to trigger that desire. And so, you know, even though, you know, it's, it's tricky, but because you don't want to go too crazy, but, but yeah, being prepared is really important. Um, I, you know, like restaurants, some people, a lot of people were posting last year about going in and they asked for something and they didn't have a great option or they ended up feeling really bad after they ate the food. And I was saying like, you know, call ahead of time and, and, um, and, and just like you say, be prepared, bring, you can bring stuff sometimes to certain situations. Um, and just, yeah, just thinking about those trouble situations ahead of time really and coming up with, uh, alternatives is a good, a good suggestion too. Absolutely. I went out to eat um, recently with my mom and her boyfriend, and I called ahead to make sure I could get something without salt and oil. And it's just, you know, if your priorities are to follow this lifestyle and to become the healthiest you that you can be, then, you know, you have to get your priorities straight and figure out what's important to you. For me, like, eating super clean and healthy is just really important to me. So. Um, it becomes almost like an adventure, you know, like, how can I maintain, you know, eating this way, where, whoever I'm around and wherever I go. And for me, it's exciting, because I just got back from this camping trip. And like, guaranteed, everyone there ate way more fruits and vegetables, because I was there and because of what we brought, you know, and so you get to share your health with others and inspire others to want to eat more vegetables and fruit. You know, you never know. So I really like yeah. that aspect of it as well. Yeah, yeah there's the reason I wanted to do this video was there's people who post, there's a, a couple of like community, some of them, one of them was a private uh, plant based community. And so people were fairly open about when they would go off the rails and stuff, which is great because they could sort of be accountable. And I, I find there's a lot of people with denial and they won't even admit that they're eating you know the, the unhealthy foods but but these people were great in a way that they would say you know I, w I went off the rails and i ate this or that but what i found was the people that would say that would do it repeatedly and people would i didn't know how to react to that because people would be like oh don't worry about it forget it you know move on go back to the you know just get back on the horse again but when you go back and indulge in those things it sets up that repetitive you triggered it in your brain it's going to think about it for the next time and maybe a month later you hold off until you can't do it again and so i sort of saw past that initial i didn't want to be totally forgiving and say it's okay don't worry about it and not be judgmental but at the same time you know that they're setting themselves up for for uh you know for a bad repetitive nature of that but so um i think that you know what we've discussed is is completely break the habit by you know getting rid of that stuff i've you know created alternatives and and coming up with prep being prepared if you're going to go out and, and if like you said and now analyze the situations not just with yourself when you binge at home but what when do you get into trouble when do you tend to go off the rails is it when you go to a social event when you go to a restaurant um when you get stressed just just thinking about that being more aware and sort of planning for each of those scenarios i think would be a good start yeah absolutely becoming honest with yourself about you know what your desires are what your habits are um educate educate yourself uh find out you know why you're doing what you're doing you want to be really healthy you know and you know change, yeah that's change, change your habits to uh what your desires are really important yeah i guess that's education i forgot that you mentioned that and then depending on what people are eating as their unhealthy food if they're aware that some of the animal products are unhealthy like if, if they not only the health aspects but the animal uh, environmental yeah welfare environmental i just saw that calspiracy which um talks a lot about how none of the environmental organizations want to talk about the animal agricultural industry causing the environmental issues and a lot of it's because they want they're getting money and they don't want to upset the those industries so 
when the more, the more you know, education about the health aspects, but also animal welfare, like when you learn about what happens to the animals and stuff like that, that can add motivation to people. Like if you tend to snack and eat some kind of dairy product, um, getting educated on those things and and really emotionally connecting with what's happening, and that'll stop, that that could help people stop you know some of those habits as well. I so agree with that. Honestly, when I see packaged meat and like cheese and stuff like that, I like I see beyond it. I see the pain and suffering of the animals. I just see this whole other level, and it's just like, ugh, like, yeah. 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 I was, yeah, I was uh, years ago. I was listening to Tony Robbins, like a, you know, and he was saying that at the base level for people, it's pain and pleasure. Like there's a pleasure trap, but at the basic level, you know, we, we seek pleasure and want to avoid pain. And a lot of the mechanisms to change your habits is to sort of change what you associate pain and pleasure with. So when you look at meat and dairy and this, that, now you deeply emotionally feel pain of the, of the animals and everything like that. It's a very strong connection. Whereas before, you might people look at a steak or cheese and and have the pleasure. So that's but it has to be you know it has to be real. It has to be really uh, deeply felt. But so now and if you learn about salt, you know various um, unhealthy foods and 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 think about what it does to your body, you start to associate pain and, and what the future. Because a lot of stuff happens in the future, like and so people don't worry about it as much. But associating you know understanding that these things. You know, you, you can associate more pain with some of these habits that you have, and um, and more pleasure with the new foods that you give time to adjust to. So it's just switching, switching. The, yeah. Absolutely, you can think, wow, these foods, everything I'm putting into my body is feeding my cells, and like I'm gonna feel so much better when, you know, I don't have all these sicknesses that I have, or maybe you know I'm supporting a healthy weight because of the information that I learned in this McDougal book, and it's just like talking to yourself. You know, telling yourself, wow, what I'm eating is supporting the person that I want to become. You know, those kind of things definitely help. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's great. Well, thanks so much for all the information. And, um, and um, I'm, hoping I'm hoping that it helps, you know, my viewers and, you know, get past some of the, the sticking points when they, you know, they have the bad habits that they, they can't seem to break. So thanks so much. And I encourage everybody to check out Star's channel. It's Divine Bag of Cells on youtube anything else you'd like to say about your channel before we go yeah my channel um it's kind of all about mental physical emotional spiritual health kind of becoming our best version um i used to be kind of at the opposite end of the spectrum where i really was not healthy and i was really abusing my body and i've just come to this place where i just desire you know health on all these levels and i just want to share my experience and what i've been through and you can kind of go on this health journey all together. So. Sounds great. So everybody, make sure you check it out and subscribe to Star's channel, Divine Bag of Cells. Thanks, guys. See you later. Thank you.